Well, uh, listen, uh, oh my God. you know what, we've got a little, do we want to do this? Do you want to make some initial comments on the next album, the White Album? I know we've talked a little about this, well, but we didn't get it recorded. One more single, I forgot. Hey Jude, I don't know if you. Oh to do that. well, shoot! Let's roll into Hey Jude. Is that is it doable? I'm yeah, I didn't study it. I actually not sure what key it's in. Um, I think it's an E. Let me see. Let me find it on uh, tube. Hey Jude. Hey Jude. Find it in a second. I think it's E. Uh, hey, Jude. F. <laughs> ah, well, close. You only one off. This is, oh, God, this is so classic. God. Oh, I miss the Beatles. Why does time have to happen? All right, so it's an F, but it's really an E because he's using a capo. He wouldn't, oh, he wouldn't have written this. Well, no, nah, I'm pretty sure it's an E. <laughs> The difference was, his guitar was in tune. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I, I have friends that love the Beatles and hate this song. Oh, really? Yeah, it, because it's one of those songs that, like, you go to a party and yeah. you hack on the guitars. Like, oh, come on, everybody, well, let's sing along to the, Jude. Yeah. There was also just sort of an oversaturation on radio waves. Yeah. But the fun part at parties is when you get to the screaming section at the end. Oh. Because, you know, <laughs> you people, yeah! <laughs> it's screaming Jay Hawkins time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 B7. There's the minor ninth. Oh man. They do this a lot. And for some, I don't know why they get away with it in my mind. Maybe because I'm biased toward them. But I always hated that sound. Yeah. But yet, it, Paul it, could do it. How long did he stay on that? Is that sort of something where you maybe pass through pretty quickly? Song and make it better. Yeah. No, so it's just uh, two beats. Yeah. You know. And actually it goes, uh, hey, you, to be really technical, it's, hey, hey, you. It goes to B. And then it goes to B7. Can you talk quickly about the relationship between the, the B to the B7? Yeah, well, that's, uh, it's a very subtle difference. And in fact, you know, lots of times you could play a major chord and it will substitute as a seventh chord, even in blues settings, you know? Okay. Like, you know, I've, I've harped on, like, the blues is seventh root. Well, there's so much by a blues chord progression that can be implicated by the melody line you're singing. Right. I see. Da, 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 da. Right. That's a, that makes it blues right, right. there. All right, so but I'm not using a seventh. Right. But the implication is there. In this case, it's purely classical. It's not blues. Um, what it does is it emphasizes the idea that we're going to be going home to E. Could have, it could have just easily stayed on the beat, hey, and, and sounded fine. Hey, you. So there I played the B all the way through, not much of a yeah. difference. You know? Right, right, right. It's just a slight little spice, that's right. all it is. Right. <coughs> Remember to let her into your heart, and you can start to mix it. It's one, five, one, four, one, five, one, you know. So this song doesn't have any real composition surprises in it? No, uh, when we go to the bridge, 
he does a secondary dominant. We're going to go to an A chord, and what he does is he turns the E into an E7. And we're using this line. And the reason, that's a, that's a chromatic line. It's a line that's, that's pretty common. The, uh, this note is the root of the key. Okay. This note is T of the key. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Mm -hmm. And when we turn it into a seventh, we flat that T. All right, so, and that acts as five, seven, or four, or five, seven to A. Okay. All right, now again, five to one relationship. A, B, C, D, E, seven, going to A. All right. When we think of the five to one relationship, you have to think of the chord you're going to and then count up five steps. Okay. So in other words, when we say a five to one relationship, E7 to A, we have to think of the A chord, count up the A note, the A scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. I mean, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, there's five steps, that note is E, that's E7 to A. Okay? So, uh, I, I lost the key. Uh, Alright, so what's going on there? Mm -hmm. Same thing as this trick with the C. Scale line in the key of E. We have A, E sharp, F sharp, E sort of. Right. Scale notes of the key of E, of the key of, uh, well technically for a moment it's the key of A, uh, but it's not a big deal. Interesting move. Right. That's a weird move. He turns the E into an A7, an E7, but he's not using it in a five to one relationship. He's not resolving to the A in this case. And that's an interesting move because we get we get the D note in the E7. Remember, we moved out of E just because of that right. moment. But then he goes. So we're moving that D up to a D sharp, which takes us back to E proper. Okay. That's it. That's, that's it. That's pretty much it. Then he goes, uh, we move into Mixolydian at the end. Uh, said mixolydian seventh chord blues those three things remember i said there were right. three things to think of that was the third thing one of those so mixolydian seventh chord blues all those have to be kept in mind together however always remember too that seventh chord doesn't always mean blues in right. the european sense sometimes it just means five to one okay okay so uh and you can hear the interesting thing is we're moving into mixolydian and guess what he starts singing blues licks at that point that's right. Now this melody is purely straight classical mixolydian. That's all right within the scale. But then he goes. Yeah, that's right. right. Then he goes James Brown. Right? You know, with the screaming uh -huh. and guttural noises. Uh, I loved all that stuff. I thought it was fabulous. The uh, lore is that. Uh, you know, when they were recording a bunch of songs, and uh, when that song, they saved that song for last, because Martin said to him, if you're going to scream like that, you better save your voice, <laughs> you know. And it was, uh... Oh, we got Big Truck coming by here. Big Truck. There we go. I just love the, uh, the cart, you know, in a way, the cart blush that the Beatles had, well, we're the Beatles, we could do anything. Huh. In a way, you know, they got away with a lot of nonsense, like, you know, one, two... 
this like lame stuff sure. that they were doing. One, two, three, four. Can I have a little more? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love you. Ba, 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 ba. You know, really yeah. silly shit. I don't even know where that's from. I think it's uh, maybe on the Ellis Submarine record. Could be. In any case, uh, but the carte blanche also on the other side of it, the positive side, was McCartney says, you know what, in this ballad, this beautiful, lovely ballad that I'm singing to John Lennon's son, you know, to give him, you know, some sense of spiritual strength, I'm going to have a scream fest at the end of the song for another five, for the same length of the entire song. <laughs> you know, I mean, that is, uh, I'm glad they had that kind of carte blanche because... Yeah. Uh, you know, we wouldn't get stuff like that. Sure, And, sure. you know, frankly, when you think about the tradition of screaming in rock and roll, you know, he, he learned to go, woo, from Little Richard he brags about, and he listened to James Brown and people like that. And Jerry, and Jerry uh, Lee Lewis. Jerry, all those guys that were screamers. Well, you have to say that McCartney perfected screaming, <laughs> much more so than Lennon ever did. Yeah, maybe true, yeah. You know, so uh, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad in a way that you know, they recognize their power and they can get away with anything because it also left room for a lot of things they would not have normally yeah, done. Yeah, maybe so. so. So God bless them, the Beatles. Well, listen, we have covered, that's great. We covered uh, two biggies today, Lady okay. Madonna and uh, Hey Jude. And now for real, we're going to do White Album. Next and, and then it's going to be the White Album next we'll time. We'll be looking at... Uh, uh, Mr. Vincent Caggiano signing off. Back in the USSR, Dear Prudence and Glass Onion. If we can get that. Okay, ready. there we are. All right, that's it from uh, Venice Beach, real close to the water. February, whatever it is, the 4th, something like that. Maybe 4th or 5th. Well, we, are, you know, in Venice Beach, we really don't have a calendar. We yeah. don't need one. Which gets some of us in lots of trouble. I know, but it's hard to get a parade going. We'll catch you later. Bye. Okay.